Hi there, everybody. This is JP Leberton, project lead of Space Base DF9 at Double Fine, and welcome to Space Base DF9 Alpha 5 Doctors with Borders. So, we've added a lot in this update. We've added doctors, uh, we've added borders, and a lot of other things. Uh, one thing you'll notice up front here is that uh, the game now launches into this pause screen, and we redid our pause screen to have a message of the day that's updated live from our servers. Uh, and it's got clickable links so you can go to the forums real quick, you know, maybe if you're a new player. Um, so that's cool, but let's jump in and take a look at this test base that I've built here to show off some of the new features. Uh, we've got, you know, a lot of the new, we've got, you know, all the, all the existing kind of zones that you know. Um, we've got a big central pub here. And uh, yeah, we're doing some research, it looks like. And we've built an infirmary zone. This is one of the new additions in, uh, in Alpha 5. Um, and they mainly contain uh, these Reviva bed objects which is useful because citizens now become sick, they become injured, and of course we've added doctors to uh, make it so that to, to, help you, to help you deal with these, with these new things. Um, and that ties into, you know, just the hazard stuff, you know, like citizens getting injured and raider attacks and new immigrants coming in and bringing unknown viruses with them, stuff like that. One of the other things that we added is uh, defense turrets. You can build these both inside and outside your base. Uh, when you hover over them, they'll show their, their, their field of fire. So we've got them kind of strategically positioned right side of our airlock here. So if any hostile raiders come through, um, then they will have to deal with that first. Um, so yeah, another thing that we added here is um, these things uh, before, when a, new, when a new ship would show up that wanted to dock or some immigrants wanted to disembark, uh, then you know, it would pop up this, this dialogue box uh, and it would kind of interrupt your game flow. Um, and we never really liked that that much, so uh, we turned that into an alert here, which pops up, and now you can click on it up here, and that, and so it's kind of at will now, you know, like they're hailing you, and you decide to answer the hail, or you can ignore it, and eventually that ship will drive off. But these people seem like nice immigrants. Uh, they're maybe a little, uh, I don't know, they may be a little questionably enthusiastic, but, uh, you know, this, this is fine. No, yeah, this will be totally fine. Um, and so now, yeah, the camera also doesn't like rip control away from you. Um, the ship just shows up and now the immigrants disembark. So I could have ignored, you know, I could have ignored the ship driving up and I could have ignored the immigrants coming in entirely uh, as well. So that's cool and it just helps keep the game flow nice and smooth and keeps you focused on what you're working on. Um, so yeah, let's see. There's gonna be some other stuff that, that's, that's happened here, that's going to happen here. Um, in a bit, and one of the reasons that I know that is because uh, I brought along a dev build this time. Let me turn on some of our debug text here. This is something that players won't see, but this is something that um, that our the programmer that that is on loan to us, uh, Mr. Ben Peck, is uh, 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 implemented for us. He he overhauled the system by which uh, events come up in the game. So when a meteor strike happens or an immigration uh, event, you know, when when people show up or when raiders show up. Um, that all happens according to uh, a probability sort of role and a schedule. And now we have much better tools for debugging that stuff. Uh, and I feel like from, from everything that I've played so far on Alpha 5, uh, the game feels a lot better paced and some more interesting stuff happens and it ramps up a little more sensibly. Um, and things will get more difficult later in the game. So once your base is like about an hour of, of game time in, uh, you're going to start noticing substantially tougher threats. Uh, and viruses that you can't, that you have to research a cure for, things like that. Um, so yeah, a lot more threats all around. Uh, one of the new things, another one of the new things that you can build here is, uh, it's called an antiviral air scrubber. And what that does is it, um, you build it in a life support zone um, and it, uh, you know, uses nanite sort of technology to scrub the air and uh, lower the risk of disease infection. So the way diseases work, um, is that anybody could be walking around here, like, uh, and they could have a virus, and a lot of those viruses are airborne, you know, like if somebody comes up and chats with them, or if they touch the same object, you know, like they use the same food replicator or something, they will pass that disease on and there's a chance that they could catch it. And diseases can affect all kinds of things, like it'll make them like slow and miserable, or, you know, it'll make them like unhappy or antisocial, things like that. Um, and so doctors go around and they just periodically field scan everybody. They'll use like their little, their little tricorder type thing and they will, uh, and they'll scan people and if they find any, if they find that they have anything wrong and they know how to cure it, then they will do so. Um, one of the reasons that you build these Reviva beds in an infirmary zone is that some infections are more, are, are, can't just be cured in the field. Um, 
And I think, yeah, see, like Ray Crook, at some point, I think a doctor detected that there's a parasite. And um, so actually, I'm going to use this new button here, this command panel, uh, this command button here. We'll, we'll, we'll spruce this up later. Um, and I, I'm, I've sent him to an infirmary. So he's going to go and check himself into the hospital here because he has a parasite. Um, and a doctor is going to show up, hopefully, in time to, uh, to extract that parasite from him. Um, so this is something that would just happen randomly before. A parasite would burst out of somebody and you wouldn't really know why. Whereas now it happens because, um, you know, it, it's something that you can actually warn against and prevent. And cool, here, Dr. Brian here is going to show up and trying to remove his parasite safely in this cool revive bed thing. Um, so that's one of the things that, that you can do. Um, let's see, there's another thing that's probably going to be happening soon. Um, can go over some more of the, uh, all right, nice. The, we, our garden was looking a little sad here, but we researched, um, oh, here we go, all right, sorry. We interrupt this message to, <laughs> to bring you a raider breaching vessel. This is a new cool thing. Uh, I put the, the, the art for this thing um, just before it disappeared under the base. But the art, for, the art for this, the cool new art for this thing uh, is, up on, uh, is up on the website. And this is a ship that drives, that, that flies under your base and attaches and here it comes, it's like right up inside this guy's bedroom while he's sleeping. And yeah, a raider just came out. So now raiders have a way to get inside your base without, um, without having to come in through the airlocks. Now, as that ship is driving up and everybody just swarms the guy to go, to go beat him down. Okay, so yeah, cool, we got out of that with no casualties. And it looks like this time there was only one single raider in that breaching ship. And there you can see his ship behind the base is floating away. So we were, we were definitely on top of that. Um, that kind of worked out pretty well. But, um, you know, so these ships, they'll get under your base, but they still have to get through your, they still have to get past your defenses. So th that, that particular ship came in from, from the north here, where I don't have any turrets built. Um, whereas if he had come in from, uh, from this side, he would have had to go through the field of fire of these turrets. Um, and FYI, you can now build uh, turrets on the, you, you, can, you can build things that are on back walls, you know. Uh, previously, you weren't like necessarily able to build wall-mounted stuff on back-facing walls, whereas now you can do that with turrets. I, ju I just didn't because uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a bug that we've got to work out with, with that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, another thing that we've got here, so we've got a dead raider. Um, <laughs> and no sooner have we dealt with that than we've got a meteor strike that's incoming. Um, and yeah, whatever happened to uh, to Ray Crook there? Ray Crook, by the way, is one of our is one of our animators. Uh, he's been working on Broken Age and stuff. But um, yeah, it looks like cool. It looks like he's like we successfully removed the. Uh, oh, now he's sleeping in that bed. Um, we successfully removed his parasite. So this is a guy that just absolutely just would have been dead. Um, that uh, yeah, and he, he he space face logged about having the parasite removed. So that is a guy who just would have been dead to rights if uh, if we hadn't. Uh, we hadn't gotten that parasite out of him with the with the new doctor and uh, revive bed. So yeah, we've got a we've got a, a meteor coming in here. Um, why don't we clear the? I can't get him out of his room because. Oh yeah, let me let me let me get people out of the infirmary here. This is not safe to be in right now, guys. So I'm using an alarm panel. That's something that we added last time. And yeah, okay. Now there's meteors coming down. All right, our security people are on it, putting out that fire. That's cool. <laughs> Ray Kirk is just going to sleep through all of this, I guess. I guess, yeah, none of the meteors have, uh, have caused any fires here, so yeah. <laughs> so Ray Crook, heavy sleeper. Um, all right, yeah, and the fires actually, yeah, it looks like this, this part was the, was the hardest hit. Uh, but yeah, we've got a whole bunch of people with fire extinguishers on the job. This is what happens when you plan out everything, you know, carefully and all that, and, you know, people are able to deal with all these emergencies that come up. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of it. Um, one thing that uh, I'm kind of I'm a little surprised that a um, oh gosh oh this is bad though. Yeah, see uh, this has been breached. Ray Cook is trapped in his bedroom. He's freaking out, but I think he's safe for the moment. So let's go into the construct menu here and patch up this hole in the floor um, that came from a meteor impact. That's bad. Yeah, actually everybody just uh, I think I was. A, the fool and put the alarm panel for this thing over here. Everybody just stay clear of the main corridor here because uh, there's a breach in the floor and we don't want anybody. Oh yeah, and the oxygen's running out of it. Why don't you guys just stay, let's see, can I, can I confine you to quarters here by doing this? Oh, get out of there. This is quite a, uh, this is quite a, a situation I've got here. So hopefully one of our builders will get out and um, I hope I'm not just closing the door on that guy. 
well, I don't know what, I don't know what room he's gonna be in. Yeah, so this alarm is telling people to like stay away from this, uh, in this dangerous area here, but they're not being too smart about it. Um, I mean, they're staying away from the breach, so you know, and they and they and they do that. That is part of their AI. So let me make sure that I've got a builder who can come out here. Uh, okay, yeah, I do have, I do have some builders. Oh, you know, let me assign my two those two new immigrants to builder duty. They're not doing anything, and they will go out and patch this thing up from the outside of the base, and then everything will be hunky dory. Um, so yeah, life has kind of gotten back to normal here after after a few of those things. Um, yeah. All right. So um, so yeah, I wanted to have a look at. So I, th I think I've I've, I've covered uh, a decent portion of of what we've of what we added in this update. Oh, another thing is that um, is that we added uh, in Alpha Four last last major update. We, uh, we added a research system where, whereby you could build these research labs and then you could have scientists go and research new advances. Uh, one of which being like the, the modified oxygen recycler here that has like twice the output. So it just pumps out a lot more oxygen and makes, makes your base more, uh, more efficient. Um, but uh, we, we added a screen for Alpha 5 uh, that lets you coordinate all of that, all of the stuff that you can research. Um, and yeah, there's two general categories of it. If there were any diseases that we knew about but didn't have the cure for, they would show up here and we would have to have scientists go and research the thing before doctors could cure it. Those are the really serious infections, you know, those are the really deadly ones that will show up later in the game. Uh, and then there's also technology, which, um, you know, and if we had more research labs, we'd see them here on the left. And on the right here, we've got progress on all of our stuff. Um, you know, we're, we're currently researching body armor uh, here, which will make our, our security people have stronger armor and just better prepared for raider fights. Uh, and I've, you can see I've already researched a few things here, and those things sort to the bottom. We've researched heavy doors, we've got these uh, improved matter refineries, the, the, the oxygen recycler, all that kind of stuff. And it'll show uh, prerequisites, like this thing requires another advance now, um, and this little unlock icon shows that we have already met those prerequisites. So yeah, this you know, and this base is so it's a, it's a, it's a ways along the, the research tree. Um, oh yeah, it looks like I let a ship pass by without uh, letting letting them in. Um, so yeah, uh, all of that said, let me show you some of our debug tools. Like I said, uh, yeah, Ben Peck uh, did a bunch of stuff. He added the cool new pause screen. Um, and he also added this, uh, you know, he overhauled the event system, did a whole bunch of stuff, and he also did some platform work uh, to make the game run a little better on a few systems and uh, bring in some of the changes to the Moai engine that uh, our tech people were doing on Broken Age. Because um, we like to share tech and, you know, help, you know, bring, bring fixes in from other projects at Double Fine. Uh, so yeah, let me click on one of our citizens, because they're like, you know, you can get a lot of info about these citizens. Um, and this is divided into multiple pages, actually. Um, you can scroll around here. So yeah, here we can see uh, there's a botanist, and um, there's a whole bunch of info about like whatever's going on. You know, like her current state. This is her personality, her skill proficiencies. This graph right here is actually showing her uh, her job uh, uh, skill progress. So she's gradually getting better at her job, uh, and these things correspond probably with when she's going on duty and doing work as a botanist. She's, so she, she's improving really swiftly. Uh, there's another page here that shows um, how morale and needs work. It'll show you like the values for all these things, like all the different things in the, in the recent past that have changed her morale. And then we've got this, this cool, um, these cool line graphs and stuff that show how these properties are changing over time. Um, when there's little bits of like the, the, the amusement curve here is like the cyan color and it bumps up a little bit, I guess when she like played a video game or did something fun. Um, so yeah, and this is how we track this stuff over time. She's, her energy is gradually going down and eventually it'll get low enough that she needs to sleep. And she'll go find a bed and sleep in it for a while. Wait a minute, is something going on here? Something, something nutty happening? Oh my gosh, oh gosh, people are, uh, they're getting sucked for, oh no, we just lost somebody. Oh, you know what? Okay, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm a bad base administrator here. Um, because yeah, they're trying to get to an airlock here, but I put the, the hallway on alert, so they're like, they're, they've been told not to path through that. So that was a case where I tried to, you know, micromanage people, and uh, geez, now I feel really bad. And now this builder is totally just gonna go out and fix it, no problem. Oh man, so let that be a warning about putting, uh, about setting alerts on these main corridors here. 
Um, so anyway, yeah, back to, uh, yeah, let's check up on, on our builder. Oh yeah, this is another small addition that I uh, bragged about on the blog. Uh, Jeremy and, and Matt uh, rigged this up. It was kind of an art tech collaboration. But now, um, when people go behind the base, before it would show like this weird purple shader and it was like, is that guy like floating through walls and turning purple? Is he a ghost? What? Of course he's not a ghost. He's a, he's just a builder who's, uh, and now, yeah, and now he's inside and he's spacesuiting around inside. People are looking at him funny. So yeah, this guy fixed, fixed up this breach. Everything is cool. Um, but yeah, it'll show that cool yellow outline thing. We also saw it on the, on the breach ship. When it got behind the base, it was like, okay, I should draw the outline of it now. So you can tell there's something behind there, but it's not like blocking things or making things really hard to read. So that's cool. Um, good job, Key Um um, all right, so just a little bit more to go over here. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, so like I said, we've got these cool needs graphs. Um, we can check out their affinities for everything. We can see like exactly how much they like every type of food and band that are currently known about in the world. Their affinity map, like how much they like and or hate other people and how familiar with them they are. So you can see who their BFFs are. Uh, and then just a task history of like everything that they've done. And this is sort of our AI thing showing like yeah, here's why, if they stopped doing something, here's why. Um, so yeah, oh yeah, this guy's not doing any new decisions here. Um, so yeah, let me jump around here to, all these people are going to sleep. It must be the end of the day here. Um, cool, uh, yeah, I just wanted to show one more little thing here. This is, um, this is once this person recalculates their, um, recalculates their AI needs and tasks and stuff. Yeah, see, here we go. This is sort of an exploded view of how their decision-making process works. These are all the different things in the world that they could do, and then they score those. Uh, some of them are just gated outright. They're like, oh, I can't even do this because it doesn't even apply to me or I'm not in the right context. Whereas these other things are like, okay, these are the needs that these fulfill, and this is, so the thing at the top of the list that scores the highest, that's what I'm gonna do next. And because this guy is a bartender, and he's on duty as a bartender doing his job, uh, he's like, I'm gonna serve food at a table because somebody else is there waiting for, waiting to be served a meal. So, uh, so yeah, we've got a lot of cool stuff and we're always adding to this kind of debug functionality, you know, to just make it easier to work on the game and tune it. And uh, yeah, so there's a bunch of other little things uh, and you can check the change list for the full report on it, but I think that's most of the cool stuff. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed, uh, you enjoy Alpha 5. Uh, we're going to be getting out a hotfix update. Uh, we've got uh, a top man, and by top man I mean Ben Peck, working on the Mac and Linux builds. I'm sorry that we, uh, we had to delay those by about 24 hours behind the Windows build, um, just because we ran into some, some weird tech stuff, OpenGL, etc. Um, but yeah, so we'll have those out soon, and then we'll probably have a, 5, a build 5A out really soon to fix any of the critical things that have popped up in that first 24, 24 to 48 hours of release, um, as we've always done with, with previous alphas. Uh, but for now, uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed watching this, and hope you enjoy Alpha 5, and thank you so much for playing.